Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 4 of the design patterns tutorial. In this session, we will discuss lean initialization in Singleton, how to use multi threads in Singleton, and how to implement a thread safe Singleton class using our previous example. Please refer to the previous parts of this tutorial before proceeding. Now, let's switch to the Visual Studio and bring up the Singleton demo application. In the previous session, we have discussed why we change this constructor to private and why we have sealed down this class. Now let's focus on the get instance property. The primary responsibility of the get instance property is to create singleton instance. However, we are delaying the singleton instance creation till the get instance property is invoked. This delayed instance creation is called lazy initialization. Lazy initialization works fine in single threaded environment. You may be wondering why this code works only in single threaded environment. To answer that, imagine a situation where multiple threads are invoking get instance property at the same point of time. When that situation occurs, there is a chance that we can create multiple instances of this singleton object. Now let's switch to the main program and focus on the code that we have written in the previous session. Both student and employee are invoking the get instance property in a sequential manner or in a single threaded manner. Which means the employee invokes the get instance property once the student's get invoke code is completed. Now let's see how we can invoke the get instance property in parallel. For our convenience, let's move the code related to employee and student into two separate methods. We can do that in two easy steps. Now choose the area that we need to move to a new method. Now let's choose the student related code and right click on this area and click on quick actions and refactoring. IDE will present us with extract method option. Click on that and now look at that. It has created a new method and the student related code is moved to this new method. Let's rename this method as print student details. Now let's do the same thing with the employee related code as well. Choose the employee related code area. Right click, click on quick actions and refactoring and say extract method. Let's rename this method as print employee details. Now that we have created two methods related to employee and student, let's invoke them using parallel.invoke method of .NET Framework 4.0. Let's see how we can do that. Let's type parallel.invoke. As the name says, parallel.invoke invokes the methods as actions. Let's pass these two methods as actions to the parallel.invoke method. You may be wondering how we can do that. It's pretty simple. We can use the lambda expressions and invoke the print student details method. And also we can invoke the employee details method with a comma separator and create another lambda expression and invoke the employee details. And close the parallel dot invoke over here. Let's just align it in such a way that it's easy to read. Now look at that. We have moved the employee details as well as student details in the parallel.invoke method. All right. Now that we have wrapped these two methods as actions in parallel invoke, let's run this application. Let me just put a breakpoint at the instance creation before running the application. Now let's run this application by pressing F5. Look at that. The runtime has hit the breakpoint. Let's just run this application by pressing F10. Look at that. The runtime has hit the breakpoint again twice. Now let's just run this application. Now, if you look at the output and notice that the counter value has been incremented to 2. This proves that in a multi threaded environment, when both employee and student are invoking the get instance property in parallel, we are ending up in creating two instances of singleton object. And this violates the singleton design pattern principles. Let's see how we can avoid this situation. Let's close the application and go back to the code. To avoid this situation, 
Locks are the best way to control threat race condition and they help us to overcome the present situation. Let's see how we can do that. Let's add a private static read only object obj equal to new object. Let's use this object as a lock object and wrap the code block which creates the singleton instance. Let's say lock obj and then move this instance creation under this lock object. Now with these changes only one thread can enter into this code block at a given point of time. That means when both employee and student are racing with each other in multi-threaded environment lock ensures that only one thread which arrives earlier succeeds to enter this code block and the other will wait till the first one is completed. Now let's run this application and see what happens. Let's run this application. Now look at that. The output of the counter value is at 1 which means the lock worked very well and we are able to restrict multiple instance creation and also we have overcome the threat safety issues as well. Let's stop this application and go back to the code. If you inspect the code, the locks are very expensive to use and there is no need to use the locks every time when we invoke the get instance property. So how do we avoid unnecessary lock checking? Basically, we need the runtime to enter into the lock scope only when the instance is null. So we just need to add another null check before the lock check. Let's put another null check here. If instance is equal to null, then let's enter into the lock. Let's wrap up this lock code in this instance null check condition. Now let's inspect the output by running this application. The output didn't change. And this double verification of null instance checking is called double check locking. Please refer to the Wikipedia article for more details on the double check locking. Now you might be wondering that this double check locking has complicated the singleton instance creation, isn't it? And the answer from my end will be yes. In the next session, we will discuss how to simplify the lazy initialization and we'll also discuss the advantages and disadvantages of the lazy initialization. Till then, Thank you for listening and have a great day.